This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The first of the new generation of Warp 5 Starship designed for long-term space travel and scientific discovery, the NX-01 launched in 2151 under the command of Captain Jonathan Archer. These revolutionary vessel were humanity's first spaceship to be fitted with a Warp 5 engine that made interstellar exploration a practical reality. The Enterprise NX-01 was one of the most significant ships in the history of Starfleet and played a vital role in establishing the United Federation of Planets. With the ability to travel at Warp 5, this allowed humanity within reach of thousands of populated planets. The ship was the pinnacle of 32 years of research and development at the Warp 5 complex by Archer's father, Henry Archer, and other scientists. The Enterprise NX-01 remained in service for 10 years before being mothballed after advances in warp technology rendered her revolutionary engine obsolete and was later replaced by the iconic USS Enterprise 1701. Let's start with the Airbus A350 which had a total length of 74 meters or 242 feet and has a height of 17 meters or 56 feet. The Enterprise NX-01 is relatively small in size when compared to other vessels. It measured at 225 meters or 738 feet in length with a height of 33 meters or 108 feet. It can accommodate up to 83 crew and with a total of 7 decks on board. The larger Enterprise A had a total length of 305 meters or 1,000 feet with a height of 75 meters or 246 feet. For the Voyager, it measured about 345 meters or 1,132 feet and about 116 meters or 380 feet in height. In this comparison, the NX-01 along with the other familiar starship was the smallest. The NX class established the configuration that would later become a trademark of the Starfleet vessel with a forward section that housed the crew's quarters and the majority of the ship's livable volume. While the NX-01 warp engine was a major advancement, it was still an experimental piece of technology and require an extensive amount of maintenance and regular attention. In general, the NX class was rather basic and flat in design because it lacks an elongated secondary hull and an interconnecting dorsal that was later used on the iconic Enterprise 1701 design language. As the series was supposed to be the precursor of Star Trek, the original series, all design to be future has to reflect this, including the configuration of the hero ship that was supposed to be future in the series, Enterprise NX-01. The front of the saucer section is equipped with a navigational deflector that protects the ship from space dust and other particles that would otherwise cause significant damage to the ship at faster than light speed. Most of the crew's activity takes place in the large saucer section. The bridge, the command center of the ship, sit atop of the saucer section. Behind the hull, between the warp nacelles, was a large symmetrical warp governor. This was used to regulate the warp fields to generate by the nacelles, which were typically unequal. The rear section contained the engineering system that was connected to twin warp nacelles which was supported by pylon to keep them away from the main body of the ship. The double hull, pylons, and warp nacelles are inhabitable and can only be accessed with an environmental suit. At the venture side of the ship was the shuttle pod, launch bay, sensor dome, and observation gallery. On both the port and starboard were the impulse engine and on the tip of each warp nacelles were the Bussard's collector. 
Before we head over to the interior section of the Enterprise NX01, I want to give a shout out to our video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything, including your product, content you created for your passion project, or just showing your online portfolio. Get started with the best in-class website template and customize it to fit your personal needs. Browse each category of your business to find the perfect starting place. In addition, sell your product on an online store. Whether you sell a physical or digital product, Squarespace has a tool you would need to start selling online. Built-in analytics measure the impact of every sent email. Stand out on any inbox with Squarespace email campaign. Collect email subscribers and convert for them to loyal to grow your online business. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords and most popular product and content. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash half screen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, return it back to the NX01. Deck A was the smallest of the seven decks and consists of the bridge module and captain's ready room. It was served by a single turbo lift that opens on the back of the bridge and at the front of the bridge was the main view screen. As will become typical of Starfleet vessel, the bridge was circular with the captain's chair at the center of the room. In front of the captain's chair was the helm and navigational station. Working clockwise from the turbo lift, there was the science station and communication on the port. Then on the starboard side was the tactical and engineering station. Behind the bridge was the situation room with the tabletop station that was connected to the ship's library computer and the engineering system. The bulkhead in this area incorporated a number of status monitor display and connected to the situation room was the head. The shuttle sensors should have picked it up. They went to visit some monks. Why would they scan for alien ships? It should be standard procedure, that's why. In any event, there it is. There what is? A vessel, not Vulcan, and it's less than one kilometer from our shuttle pod. Not a lot of room on that landing platform. Adjacent to this area was the port side airlock and vertical access hatch, which provided access to the rest of the ship if the turbo lift doesn't work. Deck B was equipped with several onboard science labs and the research center with the vessel primary mission being exploration. The ship is outfitted with an array of equipment to study anything it might encounter in its travel, which also includes the stellar cartography lab, the physical cosmology lab, weapons locker, and the refueling bay airlock. Toward the back was the aft dorsal phaser cannons a secondary research lab, and two first-stage plasma accelerator on the upper level. At the center of Deck B was the computer core, an emergency power station, the access corridor, and two deuterium tanks located on both the port and starboard. Located on the front section was the two airlock and two water storage tanks. A vital function to the crew's health and morale, the recreational area of the ship was located in the forward section of Deck C, which includes the water storage tanks at the tip. It features a fitness equipment, exercise space, locker room, and game room. The main computer core for the NX-01 was a cylindrical structure occupying the central area of Deck B, C, and D. It's responsible for maintaining the ship's system and archiving data accumulating during the vessel's mission. Located near the computer core is the computer library, an engineering lab, a fabrication bay, and an equipment and weapons locker room. For the back was the lower level first stage plasma accelerator, warp plasma transfer conduit, and the warp control processor. 
One of the most important systems on board is the waste processing system. The redundant processing system maintains the waste system for the entire vessel, which includes the waste water recycling system and the water waste matter holding tanks. The majority of the living quarters were on deck D where the main engineering was located. It also included the enlisted officers quarters, the enlisted officers bathroom area, and the junior officers quarter which was located on the outer section of the ship. The matter and energy conversion transportation system or transporter was located in the aft section of deck D with the max capacity of 6 people. The NX-01 was also outfitted with the command center to help plan, maintain, and execute current missions for the ships and crew, which was also equipped with its own dedicated computer interface and system. All warp drive function are controlled for main engineering, and directly adjoining this compartment was the antimatter injector, gravimetric field displacement manifold, and the reactor waste processing bay. Toward the front were the additional water storage tanks, and on the midsection were the cargo bay and the life support system. On deck E was where the sick bay and medical labs were located in the safest part of the ship. It was also considered one of the largest decks. It had about 30 escape pods, and about half the deck were taken up by the crew's quarters. It also served as a medical resource facility and was provided with the state-of-the-art equipment in the center of the circular room. Three bio beds were positioned next to one another around the edge of the room and was fitted with the diagnostic and scanning equipment. Those are immunocytic gel worms. Try not to shake them. What do you think of Earth? Intriguing. I especially liked the Chinese food. On the midsection was the ventral cargo bay door and several bulk food and refrigerated storage. Food was prepared in the galley, and the crew meet and eat in the single mess hall that also doubled as a recreational area. In addition, the ship could carry real food, which was kept in the cryogenic storage, and the ship could carry enough food to last for several years. The ship maintained several hydroponic greenhouses to provide fresh fruits and vegetables for the crew's mess hall. Next to the greenhouse was the warp plasma coolant tanks, the inspection pod bay, and the main battery room. At the aft end of the ship was the second and third stage plasma accelerator, the main flaring impulse rockets, and the station area and launch bay. The impulse rocket was the primary propulsion system for the NX-01 at sublight speed, and was also responsible for the major ship's maneuver and power generation. Located on each nacelle is the workspace called the catwalk. It is used to make repairs on the warp core and access the Bussard's collector. Toward the front was the deflector dish, and at the outer rim were several officers' quarters. At the forward port section was the engineering quarters with its own private bath and computer access to all engineering systems. Quarter for Travis Mayweather was located in the port section while Jonathan's Archer's quarters were situated in the forward starboard section. On deck F, the NX-01 was equipped with four armory room, two forward primary, and two aft secondary. Each weapon room was outfitted with a tube capable of launching photonic torpedoes. The torpedoes storage facility, warhead storage magazine, main weapons locker, and the weapons analysis lab were also located in this section. The NX-01 was equipped with a fortified brig, an antimatter storage pods, and an antimatter monitoring station in the F section of Deck F. At the center housed a small group of Marine Command Operative, which was used in security, training, and military mission.
where the brig sees only limited use, the other compartment plays an important part in the day-to-day -day operation of the vessel. Toward the aft end was the landing bay control boot that monitors the outer launch bay doors. Often host to various Starfleet guests and dignitaries, two suite has been created on deck G to accommodate them. Each room comes equipped with its own private bath and dedicated atmospheric process that can provide specific conditions for several species. At the center is the planetary sensor array, the equipment and weapons locker, and the array monitoring bay. On the fore and aft end section was the guest quarters, which have a sitting area, a private head, and guest private dining room. And located on the port and starboard was the guest assistant's office. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth and detailed look into the Enterprise NX-01. So what are your thoughts on the NX-01? Jump down on the comment section below and let me know your opinion. And if you want to see more technical 3D animation of the original Enterprise 1701, Enterprise A or D, check out the playlist on the right hand corner. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.